The James Webb Space Telescope is just weeks away from full operation, and one of its first missions is to explore a hot exoplanet named 55 Cancri E, a distant super-Earth with a lava-covered surface that is constantly burning, is about to be glimpsed by scientists for the first time. So, have we really found a living hell? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to give you a glimpse of a world that is raining lava and constantly burning. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. In the past decade and a half, a total of 4,164,000 planets have been discovered beyond our solar system, while another 5,220 await confirmation. The majority of these were detected by the venerable Kepler Space Telescope, while the remainder have been observed by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and a combination of other satellites and ground-based telescopes. But in what is a new record, a known super-Earth was recently discovered by the ARC-2 Space Telescope Enabling Research and Astrophysics Small Satellite, making it the smallest observatory to spot an exoplanet. Led by a team from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT, this mission has demonstrated that small satellites can perform complex tasks in space, normally carried out by large observatories. Now, James Webb Telescope is going to take this lead and discover the unknown facts about this burning hell. The James Webb Space Telescope is the world's most powerful space telescope. Its high-precision spectrographs will be trained on these celestial worlds to learn more about the geologic diversity of planets across the galaxy, as well as the evolution of rocky planets like Earth. Webb will search beyond our solar system to distant worlds orbiting other stars, as well as the mystery architecture and origins of our universe and our position in it. Webb is a NASA-led multinational project involving ESA, European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency as partners. So, the James Webb Space Telescope is all set to conduct extraordinary research into hitherto unstudied planetary bodies. For the first time, scientists will get a view of a faraway super-Earth called 55 Cancri E, with a lava-covered surface that is constantly burning and where surface temperatures can reach 4,417 degrees Fahrenheit. With surface temperatures far above the melting point of typical rock-forming minerals, the day side of the planet is thought to be covered in oceans of lava, NASA said of 55 Cancri E. Imagine if Earth were much closer to the Sun, the agency added. So, astronomers discovered 55 Cancri E in 2004, after looking at the spectrum of its parent star 55 Cancri A, one of two stars in a binary system about 40 light-years from Earth in the constellation Cancer. There are at least four other planets in the same system, mostly discovered before 55 Cancri E. The team, led by the University of Texas at Austin's Barbara MacArthur, discovered subtle tugs on the parent star that could be explained by the presence of yet another planet. While the planet's existence was challenged by a second research team in 2005, a separate team in 2006 confirmed it. In addition, astronomers initially thought 55 Cancri E had an orbital period of 2.8 days, but measurements in 2011 showed that the planet is much closer to its parent star. Furthermore, follow-up observations with the Spitzer Space Telescope in 2012 showed that 55 Cancri E is much weirder than anticipated. While original estimates said the planet was dense and rocky, Spitzer suggested that the planet includes a healthy proportion of light elements and compounds such as water. However, the planet's high surface temperatures contribute to a supercritical fluid state, the researchers said, meaning that the gases are in a liquid-like state. Moreover, 55 Cancri E is around 50 light-years away from Earth and orbits around a star that is less than 1.5 million miles away from it. For comparison, that's 1 25th the distance between our Sun and Mercury. While Earth takes 365 days to orbit the Sun, 55 Cancri E revolves around its star in just 18 hours. The first observations of the planet are expected once the James Webb Space Telescope is operational. 
After considering these facts about the planet, scientists and researchers believe that this planet is tidally locked. But is this really the case? Planets that circle their star this close are thought to be tidally locked, with one side always facing the star. As a result, the hottest place on the planet should be the one that faces the star the most directly, and the quantity of heat emitted over the day should remain relatively constant. However, this does not appear to be the case. The hottest section of 55 Cancri E, according to observations from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, is offset from the part that faces the star most directly, whereas the overall amount of heat recorded from the day side varies. So close that an entire year lasts only a few hours, so close that gravity has locked one hemisphere in permanent searing daylight and the other in endless darkness, the agency said. So close that the oceans boil away, rocks begin to melt, and the clouds rain lava. So there's also the chance that 55 Cancri E isn't tidally locked. Instead, it might be like Mercury, which rotates three times per two orbits, or in simple world, a 3-2 resonance. As a result, there would be a day-night cycle on the planet. That could explain why the hottest part of the planet is shifted, explains Alexis Brandecker, a researcher from Stockholm University. Just like on Earth, it would take time for the surface to heat up. The hottest time of the day would be in the afternoon, not right at noon. In the evening, the vapor would cool and condense to form droplets of lava that would rain back to the surface, turning solid again as night falls. Another theory, according to NASA, is that the planet rotates to create day and night so its surface would heat up, melt, and even vaporize during the day, forming a very thin atmosphere that Webb could detect. With this much pressure building up, some scientists have also highlighted that it might rain diamonds there. Now that's pretty intriguing, but is this even true? A model of the planet's interior in 2012 suggested that 55 Cancri E is made up of carbon, principally as diamonds and graphite, as well as iron, silicone carbide, and possible silicates. A lead researcher, Niku Madhusudan of Yale University, said that their model was different from previous ones because, unlike previous teams, they did not base their assumptions upon Earth's chemical composition. However, this idea was challenged in 2013 by University of Arizona astronomy graduate student Johanna Tesk. In a statement at the time, she said that the parent star of 55 Cancri E is both cooler than the Sun and has more metals. She also said that the 2012 study did not properly analyze the single oxygen line in the star's spectrum, leading to possible errors. Her research instead found that the host star of 55 Cancri E has 25% more oxygen than carbon. In theory, 55 Cancri E could still have a high carbon to oxygen ratio and be a diamond planet. But the host star does not have such a high ratio, Tusk said in the statement. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.